A great documentary is one that transcends mere presentation of facts and dives deep into the emotional and intellectual core of its subject. It combines storytelling with rigorous research, creating a narrative that is not only informative, but also deeply engaging. The best documentaries offer a fresh perspective, often challenging viewers' preconceived notions and encouraging them to think critically about the topic at hand. They use a blend of visual and auditory elements to create a compelling atmosphere, allowing the audience to connect on a visceral level. Additionally, the pacing is crucial. Balancing information delivery with moments of reflection ensures that the audience remains captivated throughout. A great documentary is one that lingers in the mind, sparking conversation and thought long after the credits roll. And to that end, Cyborg a Documentary is nothing short of a not only miraculous achievement, but an uncompromising success. Be under no mistake, this is the real life Terminator story. The, the, the inception, the essence of a real life Terminator story. What starts as something so harmless, which I'll get onto in a moment, turns into genuinely the scariest film I have seen this year due to its concept. We're in the home stretch, nearly at 50,000 subscribers, so please do keep hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I still see over 90% of you watch my content without subscribing. Guys, just hit that subscribe button, it's free. It helps me so much and allows me to keep bringing you the content that you guys are watching. So go ahead and do all that. Let's get back to the video. Cyborg introduces us to Neil Harbison, who we're told was born achromatic. He can't perceive color the way the rest of us can. It's, it's beyond just standard colored blindness. It's even upper level. And so with the help of some very impressive scientists, they create this device which allows him to see color like a waveform, like a waveform of, of music almost. Now, at face value, you think that's incredible. And the journey the movie takes you on, like this is one for the thinkers, this isn't, there's, there's no booms in this movie. The journey this movie takes you on from being in a place where technology has clearly enhanced Neil's life to a place where they're trying to make advances that are questionably both unnecessary or necessary, depending on which side of the argument you fall on, but have real implications of playing God. And this isn't Terminator. This isn't iRobot. This isn't The Matrix. This is a damn documentary. This happened. This is still happening. And this is scaling up. And as I said, the power of a powerful documentary is one that really lingers in your mind. And this movie has festered in my psyche for the last few days. I can't stop thinking about it and the implications it has for the world at large. Both the positives and extreme dangers of embracing technology within ourselves and becoming, as the movie says, becoming cyborgs. The potential benefits of being a cyborg, especially for someone who has used technology to overcome color blindness, are indeed profound. Imagine living in a world where the vibrant spectrum of colors remains elusive, where the subtleties of art, nature, and even everyday signals like traffic lights are muted or indistinguishable. For a colorblind individual, the ability to use technology to correct or enhance color perception can be life-changing. It opens up a richer sensory experience, allowing them to appreciate the world in full color for the first time. This enhancement goes beyond mere aesthetic pleasure. It can improve safety, efficiency, and quality of life. Being able to distinguish colors accurately can aid in careers where color differentiation is crucial, such as in design, art, or even certain medical fields. Moreover, the integration of technology to overcome such a limitation exemplifies the power of human ingenuity in using cyborg-like enhancements to transcend biological limitations. It underscores a future where technology can seemingly merge with the human body to enhance capabilities, offering not just correction, but an entirely new perceptive on reality. And to that end, 
what we're introduced to in the first half of this movie, it's miraculous. Like I remember grabbing my wife and saying, honey, like what this guy's gone through is amazing. But as I said, as the, as the movie develops, you kind of realize, hang on, there's a sinister undertone here. And I'm going to get back to this art and technology, art and technology contradiction, for lack of a better word, because these are two, these are two planes which don't and shouldn't, in my opinion, exist cohesively. Like they're, they're completely mutually exclusive because of what the essence is. And that's something that this movie made me question because you find out that Neil Harbison isn't just someone who is achromatic. He's actually a self-labeled cyborg artist. And the dangers of cross-pollinating art, you know, the actual realm of art, which is, we'll, we'll get onto it, but art and technology, it's scary. And speaking of scary, th th that's what I want to move on to next. The, the negatives about these cyborg enhancements. The embrace of technology, particularly in the realm of cyborg enhancements, presents significant societal dangers that must be carefully considered. As we increasingly integrate technology into our bodies, the line between human and machine becomes blurred, raising ethical questions about identity, autonomy, and equality. One major concern is the potential for a new kind of inequality where those who can afford advanced technological in enhancements could gain significant advantages over those who cannot, leading to a society further divided by access to technology. This could exacerbate existing social and economic disparities, creating a world where the enhanced cyborg elite possess greater physical, cognitive, or sensory abilities than the unenhanced population. Moreover, the widespread adoption of cyborg technology could lead to issues of privacy and control. As our bodies become more connected to the digital world, the potential for hacking or unauthorized control of these technologies becomes a real threat. There is also the danger of losing personal agency if enhancements are manipulated or controlled by external entities such as governments or corporations. This raises critical concerns about who owns and controls the technology integrated into our bodies and the extent to which individuals maintain sovereignty over their own selves. Additionally, the normalization of cyborg enhancements could lead to cultural and philosophical shifts in how we perceive humanity itself. As we move towards a more technologically integrated existence, Traditional notions of what it means to be human could be challenged, leading to a potential loss of the values and ethics that have traditionally guided human societies. This could result in a society where human worth is measured by technological capability rather than intrinsic human dignity. These societal dangers highlight the need for careful consideration, regulation, and ethical reflection as we advance further into the age of cyborg technology. And be under no mistake, we are advancing. That's where this documentary leaves you. I I'll spare you the details because the journey of how we get from being sympathetic to Neil Harbison on how he overcame his achromatism to being really doubtful and, as I said, scared of what the future holds. It's, it's genuinely worrying where they're taking this technology integrating into people because he, he completely changed his body for this like he drills into his head to put an antenna on himself to read color now as an isolated thing that's fine even though it comes with its own set of ethical questions speaking of ethics actually the very fact that this went through a hospital's ethical body they say this in the documentary it went through a hospital's ethics body and they threw it out they didn't want to do the operation and it was one of the doctors who remains anonymous who did the operation for him privately against the hospital's wishes so there was an extreme amount of unethical behavior for him to get what he wanted and now he's leveraging that and he's created this cyborg enhancement agency and you know it ends with the notion of people being what they call transhuman you know they're both cyborg and human they're both machine and human aka they're cyborgs and some of the technology 
technology they're presenting as what could be in the future it, it's it's here and it's now like this is stuff that every single sci-fi book and movie has warned us about it's happening which is why it's so scary and coming back to what i was talking about earlier this idea of him being a cyborg artist they say this in the documentary which i'm going to echo now there is an extreme danger as i've said already of cross-pollinating art and technology crossing the liberal construct of quote it's art which often implies a boundary-free creative expression with the push to make human cyborgs can lead to dangerous, unchallenged technological advancements. When art is used as a justification for cyborg enhancements without ethical boundaries, it really risks normalizing radical changes to human nature without sufficient oversight. This fusion could result in a society where technology driven by artistic or experimental motives is implemented without considering its broader implications. In such a scenario, technology may, and in this case has, gone unchecked, raising significant ethical, social and existential concerns about what it means to be human and the whole, it's us. Therein lies the danger. Tracy Emin's condom riddled bedsheets, the banana being stuck to a wall. The art realm is a complete liberal think tank, and more often than not, from an outsider's perspective at least, the quote, it's art, is a kind of thought terminating cliche because it, 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 it encourages acceptance of the what is and raising questions about the why as opposed to the should and in this case should they have done that which is why i say mixing art and technology as presented in this documentary it, it's terrifying because the movie was so powerful so thought-provoking and so well made despite being absolutely terrifying i'm gonna give cyborg a documentary a score of nine out of ten this one is going to stay with me, not for days, weeks or months. This movie is going to stay with me for years to come. It's not even a cautionary tale. It's, it's, a, it's a pulling the curtain back situation on what is actually happening right now. And humankind is on the precipice of what could be a massive, and based on what I saw in this documentary, scary radical change. Those are my thoughts on it. I want to hear what you guys think. Leave your thoughts and your comments below. Please do be sure to like this video, share it with anyone who you think may be interested. Let me know your thoughts on the cyborg conundrum. Where do you stand on it? What do you think about art and technology being combined the way it has, as I've described? Let me know all your thoughts down below. There is a subscribe button here. Another video if you guys to watch up here. Please go ahead and do all that and I will see you on the next video right here on the Silver Screen Dudes. <laughs> be safe. Bye for now.